So here at Clemson, we pride ourselves on not just training the next generation of wildlife professionals, but meeting the needs of the state. And particularly when it comes to wildlife, there's no bigger species than white-tailed deer here for the public of South Carolina. And what we're doing is we're trying to conduct the most in-depth study to date of white-tailed deer and their relationship with coyotes and wild pigs. Deer are both economically and culturally really important to South Carolina. They're probably the number one game species targeted here. And they also impact the ecology in general. So my project broadly is look, looking at deer population and behavioral responses to coyote predation risk. I'm looking at factors that influence fawn survival, doe-fawn interactions, and how they move together. And then I'm looking at population changes, population dynamics of white-tailed deer in the Piedmont. These coyote questions are really rampant in the press today because of how much the public is seeing coyotes these days, or the potential impacts in the news that they're having on deer fawns in particular. But we don't really know about the ecological role they're playing. That's really important to guide how we should be controlling or managing these animals on the landscape. Generally, my study is trying to understand how coyotes are influencing native wildlife in South Carolina. And anytime an animal shows up somewhere new, we want to understand how they're influencing the native wildlife, and especially when that's a relatively large predator like a coyote. So really what it boils down to is understanding what they're eating throughout the year and how they're influencing native predators like bobcats and foxes. For coyotes, they're really adaptable, and so understanding how they're behaving in South Carolina could be different than how they're behaving in other parts of their range. And I think most South Carolinians should care about a healthy ecosystem. And I think that a, the return of a top predator is generally a good thing for a healthy ecosystem in South Carolina. Wild pigs are potentially the number one issue for both agricultural producers and wildlife management agencies right now in the state. And it's expanding across the country in terms of this issue. And so we don't have a handle on how to control them. And so Elizabeth's study is really unique because we're not just looking at pigs' impact on deer and coyotes, but every other level of the food chain from squirrels down to mice. My project focuses on invasive feral hogs, also known as wild pigs, which are present in every county in South Carolina. Wild pigs have the potential to negatively affect other wildlife, whether through habitat destruction or competition for resources. So we are using wildlife cameras to look at wild pig overlap with other species, both in space and time. We also, in a more experimental approach, are using deer feeders paired with wildlife cameras to look at deer and pig use of those feeders, including if pig use affects deer use. So a project of this scale is only happens once every decade in terms of Clemson and having this many resources put into place to study this many pieces of a system at this scale and in this depth. And so we're really thankful to the Department of Natural Resources who are largely funding this project, but also all the other partners ranging from Quality Deer Management Association, the Clemson Creative Inquiry Program, and many other private individuals, including Davis Land and Timber, that are allowing us access to their lands to do this project.